Being the best mechanical player in Fortnite is a massive deal. The correlation between the best mechanical players and most famous players has almost always been linear. Meaning, if you ever had the best mechanics in any season of Fortnite, you would also do incredibly well on Twitch and YouTube. The result of which being tens of thousands of dollars in monthly income and a name the community as a whole look up to. Today, we're going over the best mechanical players from every single Fortnite season ever. And as an added extra, we will see the progression of people's mechanics from all 28 seasons. Seasons. Starting all the way at the very first season ever, or season zero, the best mechanical player was Myth. Now, Season 0, or the Fortnite preseason, was in reality just a test for Fortnite's Battle Royale mode. It only lasted for 43 days, and the game wasn't popular at all. However, if you were lucky enough to pick up on the game this early on, you could really get a head start in building a career on what later became the biggest game in the world. Myth was one of the few who instantly stopped playing his main game and rolled the dice on Fortnite. You see, before Fortnite, Myth was a well-known name in another Epic Games game by the name Paragon. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, when Fortnite Season 0 was released, it was already teased that Paragon would eventually get cancelled. This was extremely heartbreaking news for the players who genuinely loved that game. But for I'm the Myth, this would be the biggest blessing in disguise of his career. During Season 0, Myth would break his record for hours streamed on Twitch, doing 214 hours of grinding, much thanks to his newfound love for Fortnite Battle Royale. During the very first season of Fortnite, Myth stood out mechanically by building one by one towers and playing Playing super smart, resulting in him winning more games than anyone else in the world. In addition to Myth being the player who popularized one by oneing, he also understood the importance of mat switching already in the first few days of playing, a skill some players spent months to understand after Fortnite's initial release. Before moving on to Season 1, I also do need to note that Myth had a slight additional advantage over most other players, and that was the fact that he had clocked in just about 7 hours on Fortnite's Save the World two months before Battle Royale was even released, meaning he got to try out the building and editing mechanic before 99.99% .99 of everyone else. Myth also ended up becoming one of the biggest streamers in the world, averaging over 37,000 viewers just 8 months after his switch to Fortnite, and at his peak, taking second place in the world for most followers on Twitch. Moving on to Chapter 1, Season 1, the player with the best builds and edits was Nick A30. Now, to those of you who hasn't been around since the beginning of Fortnite, this might sound super weird, considering Nick does content for casual viewers nowadays and does not play to become the best player possible. But believe it or not, in the first few seasons, he was actually incredible when it came to editing specifically, but his builds were also better than every other known player in Season 1. The background footage is unfortunately from the first day of Season 2, as Nick does not have any of his YouTube live streams public for me to watch back. But his skill on the first day of Season 2 naturally came from his hours put in, in both the pre-season and Season 1, where he was the best mechanical player. One thing I also need to mention about these early seasons is that turbo building wasn't in the game, meaning for every single build you wanted to place, you had to manually click once on your mouse button, or alternatively, on your controller. In addition to this, client-side editing was not yet added to the game, meaning the time it took for the edit menu to appear was dependent on what ping you were playing on. Nowadays, whether you play on 30 ping or 100 ping, the edit menu will appear in instantly when you press edit. It's confirming the edit that will take longer based on how high your ping is. What made Nick the player with the best mechanics at this time was the fact that he was one of the first to understand the importance of improving builds and edits, whereas most others playing the game had more than enough to focus on by simply running around and shooting at everybody. Nick, coming from a successful career as a content creator on the game The Last of Us, understood the importance of having visually appealing gameplay when streaming, so he locked in and put in the reps on both building and editing before it became popular, and as a result, he became the very best in the world and one looked up to by many for his at the time incredibly fast and consistent mechanics. For the second season, the choice is easy for the best mechanical player. It was none other than Hamlins. Hamlins very early on had a much better understanding of the grid system compared to everyone else, meaning he understood how far certain builds reached, how high they could go by him holding his crosshair at various different heights, and most importantly, he was the player who popularized calling opponents when they ramped above him. As a result of Hamlins not only being the best mechanical player of season 2, but also one of the players with the most amount of wins in the entire world, he ended up getting signed to TSM on February 3rd of 2018. And this was during his mechanical prime of season 2. TSM taking a chance on Hamlins in the beginning of February would be one of their most legendary signings even to this day. Hamlins went from 62 average viewers in November, 93 in December, and 193 in January, to just over 1500 in the very month he was signed. And 
and due to his in-game skill, coupled with his extremely likable, wholesome, and funny personality, these numbers would only improve in the months to follow. Needless to say, Hamlins is one of the most influential players Fortnite has ever seen, and because of his building and editing abilities in the early days of the game, he also wholeheartedly deserves a spot in this video. Geomark might never have got to the level of Hamlins when it came to social media, but when it came to building and editing, he became even better, and just like with Hamlins, his unique abilities to be better than anyone else in the world mechanically led to him having a highly decorated career in Fortnite. In March of 2018, or in other words, the beginning of Season 3, a ton of esports organizations recognized how good Geomark was and took an interest in signing him to play under their name for a respectable monthly salary. With many good options to choose from, Geo ended up going with a legendary org, FaZe Clan. Being noticed and signed to FaZe speaks for itself when it comes to what kind of potential you have in either competitive gaming, content, or both at the same time. Luckily for Geomark, he was able to provide phenomenal results under his new org. During his career, he would win over 70 grand from tournaments, get over 100k subs on YouTube, a quarter of a million over on Twitch, and during the entire length of Season 3, he was by many considered the fastest mechanical player in the entire world. Talking about speed, for Season 4, the best mechanical player was Symphony, but this season was more serious than any other season players had played before. And that was all thanks to an update that came towards the end of the season, adding a game mode called Playground. Playground, as you all probably know, was a mode that allowed you to 10 times faster gather mats so that you could practice your builds and edits individually and effectively. It also of course allowed for Bonuion build fights to happen consistently, and if you were in the right friend group and was able to fight tough players on the daily, that would give you a massive boost in individual skill. Symphony was one of the first who took this opportunity and put in a disturbing amount of reps into becoming a mechanical mastermind, something he also at the time achieved to a higher extent than anyone else. The downwards stair and floor edits that Sim did in season 4 was considered incredibly difficult and impressive at the time, and he gains a little extra respect because of how he was able to not only do incredible mechanical moves in playground, but he was also able to replicate the highest level of high ground retakes, fast edits, and an orthodox builds also in game, even when he was matched against other top players. And since we're on the topic of top players, it's only fitting we move on to season 5, where EU also started making some moves in terms of developing unique and impressive mechanics. The best mechanical player from this season was without a shadow of a doubt, Atlantis Magin. Now, during this period of time, competitive was not really a massive deal. The summer skirmish hadn't even started, and most players really just played Fortnite to have a good time with their friends. However, as more and more people began playing the game, a small community of ambitious players started to push each other to become individuals that were faster, smarter, and more consistent than the tens of millions of other players who had downloaded Fortnite since its recent release. And Majin, well, it's safe to say that he was one of them. Because of how good Majin was in Season 5, some people in the extremely small yet ambitious competitive community started slowly but surely talking about this mysterious talent. And Martos actually made a video of one we wanting him at the time. Majin in the video pulled off plays and nobody had seen before and Mortos was beyond impressed. And if you at the time took a look at Imagine's channel, you would see an insane video by the name Imagine Build Fights Hashtag 5, which is also the background footage playing right now. In the video, you would see Imagine doing double 90s, a move that nobody knew about and let alone how to do. You would see him do side jumps, double edits, and things that at the time were revolutionary. This season was undeniably the easiest pick for this entire video. For season 6, Mongrel stood out mechanically more than anyone else. During the season, Mongrel would post his very first build fights video, and people in the comments were more than impressed. Some saying they got dizzy by watching how fast he built, another person saying he blinked and Mongrel reached the sky limit, and others simply asking whether or not his keyboard was waterproof. You see, Mongrel was undeniably the fastest builder and editor in season 6. The way he built 90s was very visually pleasing, and his double edits were hard to match for any player, even if they had invested tons of time into the game. What made Mongrel incredibly unique however, was how he was able to have these world-class builds and edits, but also arguably having the best aim in the entire world. Because of how well-rounded he was, he was able to drop high kill games consistently, one of which being a 31 bomb he recorded and put out on YouTube, a video that would go on to get close to 6 million views. Unfortunately, at this time, he could not compete in tournaments, as the age requirement was 16 and Mongrel, well, he was 14 years of age. So he made sure to make the most out of the situation and kept grinding streams, high kill solo versus squads games, which were incredibly popular at the time, and when he got the opportunity to practice 
against other competitive hungry players, he made sure to take it, so that he was ready when he turned 16, or when Epic lowered the age requirement to compete. Naturally, we all know how it ended for Mongrel, becoming one of the very best competitors this game has ever seen, and it all started from him understanding the mechanical aspect of the game better than anyone else in the beginning of Fortnite. The season after Mongrel being the player with the best mechanics worldwide, somebody he was very close to stood out and had even better mechanics than him, and also everybody else playing the game. The person I'm talking about is none other than Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage had, and still to this day, has some of the quickest reaction time out of any player who has ever touched the game. This allows him to not only build and edit at lightning fast speeds, but he's also able to insanely quickly think out super smart plays to outplace opponents, whether it be mechanically, aim-wise, or utilizing a gun that has just been added to the game. Another trait that both Savage and Mongrel had at this time, that very few other mechanical demons possessed, was the ability to use their strength in real games against actual good players. Sure, there were tons of players with fast mechanics, but very few were able to use them playing an actual competitive event, or even when playing customs against the top players in their region. Savage, still to this day, remains one of the best mechanical players, but during Season 7, he was inhuman in comparison to the vast majority of other players. So him being my pick for this one is an absolute no-brainer. At the end of Season 7 and going into Season 8, the pressure for those of us who had invested a ton of time into Fortnite became 100 times higher. This was because just 6 days prior to Season 8's release, Epic announced that they would pour in $130 million for the biggest Fortnite tournament they had ever hosted, the World Cup. Now, one player saw this opportunity and grinded harder than ever to make sure he was one of the 100 players who qualified for the solo finals in New York. And that player was Buga. Already in the very first week of the qualifiers, just two months after Epic announced the World Cup, Buga would go on to perform better than the millions of other ambitious players trying to make it, placing 395th in opens to easily qual to the weekly finals, and then the day after, punch his ticket in to the actual finals, winning $5,000 and an additional guarantee 50k. Buga's mechanics at this time were incredibly unique. Whilst everyone was trying to be flashy, shaking their mouse around to try and look fast, Buga looked insanely fast even though he was playing in a very smooth and controlled way. By looking at his mouse movements, it seemed as though he was made for the game. If there's one player who is genetically built for Fortnite, it is Buga. He was, and still to this day, is the cleanest player that has ever competed. And much thanks to this attribute, he was the best mechanical player in Season 8. The second to last season of Chapter 1, or in other words, Season 9, had Clix's name written all over it. This was literally his season, especially when it came to mechanics. Most of you already know how Clix was able to buy a PC from winning 1v1 wagers against the various different players. Practicing when the opponents you're fighting are really tryharding makes all the hours you put in highly effective, and doing this day in and day out made Clix one of the very best fighters in the world. Because of how Clix was consistently able to play against these top players, his in-game abilities during the World Cup qualifiers were also so insane. It ended with him qualifying five times to the finals in New York and taking a spot for the player who qualified the most amount of times over on the NA East region. What Clix did right in comparison to everyone else during the time span of the early seasons of Fortnite was playing against hundreds of different players with various different strengths and weaknesses. This ended in him becoming a hyper well-rounded player, being able to beat and understand any player he fought in game. The problem a lot of people faced during this time was that they had the fundamental mechanics to be great, but they only played against the same player every single day, resulting in having some very visible weaknesses. Clix still remains one of the best ever, mechanically speaking. He's able to do things in laggy lobbies nowadays, very few are able to match. His understanding of timing is top tier, and his speed also remains supersonic. Season X concluded the first chapter of Fortnite, and in terms of mechanics, the best player at this time was Benji Fishy. This season was dominated by three EU players, one of which being Benji, and the two others being Mongrel and Mitra. Benji in Season X was kind of like a hybrid between Mongrel, his trio mate, and Savage, his duo partner, having insanely fast reaction time like Savage, and also being able to build and edit just like Mongrel. Because of Benji's mechanical abilities, he became one of the best fighters in the world during Season X, and this led to him and his trio taking home over $100,000 each just from competitive during the two and a half months the season lasted. That's over $33,000 a month in income just from competition alone. Not to mention, his social medias were probably pulling in three times these numbers as all three Mitro, Benji, and Mongrel were popping off on viewers during their partnership. Benji unfortunately no longer plays Fortnite. He's now pursuing competitive Valorant, but his legacy as one of the nicest and best players lives on. With Chapter 2 Season 1's release, the year of 2020 started for Fortnite Competitive, and during the season 
Hearthstone, a player by the name Kanata would put his mark on the game. During this era of Fortnite, a lot of pros from both EU and NA grinded creative box fights and Sword Wars. This season actually developed some amazing players, and even though Kanata was the best mechanical player, players like Bucky, Clix, and even Asian Jeff also played to an incredibly high level when it came to building and editing. Again, much like many of the other players who have previously talked about, Kanata was able to use his high tier creative mechanics also in game. In the first three solo cash cups of season 1, he would place 24th, 1st, and 2nd back to back to back, emphasizing his competitive skill as well. Season 1 would go on to be the longest season of Fortnite ever, lasting for a disturbing 128 days. Because of the season being so long, tournaments were few and far between, so pro players ended up resulting to grinding creative as previously mentioned, and Kanata came out on top as the very best mechanical player. I think a few people understand just how good Stretch was mechanically in Season 2. A lot of people compared his mechanics to Bugas because of how similar their mechanical playstyle was. However, even though people compared them in Season 2, Stretch was by far the best mechanical player in the world. Now, Stretch's mechanical strength was doing unorthodox plays nobody else was able to do. His peace control was probably 5-6 to six months ahead of everyone else's, and his consistency was unmatched. In addition to all of this, his timing during important endgame situations, where the servers were incredibly laggy, was at the very peak of what was possible at the time. This really shined through in the Season 2 Solo Invitational, where he ended on 3rd place, taking home 10k for his effort. Talking about effort, Chapter 2 Season 3 was a season that a ton of people put a lot of time into, because this was a season with a solo's FNCS and a huge opportunity for everyone who hadn't yet had the chance to prove themselves. However, when it came to mechanics, nobody came close to the likes of Eyedrop. It's rare that a player is better than everyone else on all the fundamentals by having good mechs. I'm talking Eyedrop was the best builder, editor, and he had the best movement out of any player during Season 3. Sadly though, due to severe room for improvement in the brain department, Eyedrop didn't try hard the solo FNCS as he found the tournament boring and therefore ended up not qualifying to the EU Grand Finals. Even though that result was very underwhelming, you can't deny how much of a mechanical mastermind he was in comparison to everyone else at the time. For Season 4 or Stark Season, the player with the best mechs was once again Mongrel. Mongrel is the first player who has two spots in this video, and the reason he was the best mechanically at this time was simply because of how effective he was in important tournaments with his builds and edits. In comparison to players like Eyedrop, Mongrel was far less flashy, but the difference is that at the time he was way better at just getting the job done, and in a competitive environment where you're playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's pretty much all you can ask for. As most of you know, during Season 4, Mongrel was able to perform incredibly well in FNCS, and it was in this season he was able to take home his first and only FNCS trophy. He did so alongside the two other legendary players of Tayson and Mitro, and it's safe to say that mechanically, he was by far the best player both in this trio and in the world. On the topic of legendary trios, the best mechanical player from Season 5 was one in a super legendary team. He was playing alongside Noah Rayleigh and Reese Ney, and he absolutely dominated when it came to fighting. The player I'm talking about, if he didn't already connect the dots, is Vadil. All three of these players had something fighting-wise that few others in the world understood. They were some of the first to popularize facing builds and peace controlling downwards. Peace controlling downwards is something people still struggle with to this day, but already during this season, three years ago, the deal was on top of his game and mechanically speaking, peaking in comparison to everyone else. Moving on to season 6, one of the most controversial seasons ever, the player with the best mechs was Kami. Kami has always been insane mechanically, and his strength is undeniably speedy builds and edits. That comes from his fast sense and quick thinking. Most players with as high sense as him are not able to control it, meaning they don't really see success competitively due to their inconsistent aim. But Kami, well, he's the real deal. He's able to control the fast sense, have great aim, and even better mechs, and as a result, he has earned over $1 million from competing in Fortnite. Season 7 was the season of Dukes. Dukes during this season was so good that he was able to carry two players who, don't get me wrong, were good, but not FNCS champs level good, to an actual FNCS victory. Dukes has always been one of the more underrated players in my opinion, and his mechanics are nothing short of near perfection. What made him the best at the time was how he was able to never stop whilst performing various different edit sequences. Stopping after editing, and in general just having bad movement when building and editing, is one of the main flaws of players at a low level. Players like Dukes always keep a ton of momentum, always making him a hard target to hit. He still to this day is an incredible mechanical player, but in Season 7 he was different in the best possible sense of that word. Now, different isn't the word I would like to use for Noah Rayleigh, because he's straight up a robot. Noah Rayleigh is probably 
probably the greatest mechanical player in Fortnite's history. He was doing things in Chapter 2 Season 8 and before that are still considered impressive today. Very early on in this video, I talked about Buga and how he was made for the game. And mechanically speaking, the same can be said for Noah. What makes him better than everyone is how he's able to make such small and precise mouse movements. This means that his crosshair placement always remains good and his mechanics seem incredibly fast, which truthfully, they are. His edit timing when it comes to confirming edits as well is pitch perfect. What that means is that he allows himself to crouch if needed when doing right hand peeks. He looks at the opponent to find a weakness and base his timing off of that. And obviously when he needs to be as fast as humanly possible, he doesn't let anyone down in that department either. Another player that had edit timing down to a T was Joe FN. Now most of you watching have probably not heard about Joe, but you most likely have heard about Venno, Thomas HD and Benji Fishy. These players are all friends of Joe and especially Venno and Thomas played a lot of creative against him. One, because he's a good guy, I think, and secondly, because of how good the practice became when fighting him. You see, Joe was one of those players that was better than even tier 1 pros of fighting when he had his day, and this was much thanks to his insane mechanics and high fighting IQ. I genuinely think when Joe played at his peak, he was a top 3 fighter in the world, and his best FNCS placement of 4th reflects this very statement. Someone who made a statement in the second season of chapter 3 was Vico. Now, Vico is a new generation professional player, with his first grand's appearance actually being in season 1 of chapter 3. And for a first grand's, he got a pretty okay placement of 28th. In season 2, however, he understood that he could do better and banged out a 7th place. These results pretty much came out of nowhere, as his first really good placement didn't happen until 3 months prior to his 7th place in grand's. Vico's rise to the top really shows how good it can become in a super short period of time, given that you grind insanely hard and get to be around the right friend group. I also think much of Vico's success was thanks to him understanding how to use his top tier mechanics in actual real games. Because when watching Vico on Twitch in Chapter 3 Season 2, you could tell just how confident he was in banging out insane mechanical moves even in endgame situations, a skill very few players possess. For the second to last season of Chapter 3, Peter Butt was the best mechanical player in the world. Peter Butt's way of fighting is just pure confidence. This confidence comes from knowing that he can do lightning fast builds and edits and nearly always hit an insane hard pump in the end. Peter is actually one of the more well-rounded new-gen professional players. He has an FNCS title already, which he got in Season 2, but if he keeps improving like he has every season recently, it's only a matter of time before he gets another. A player that does not yet have an FNCS win, but definitely will in the future, is Pixie. Pixie is also a new-gen competitive player, and his mechanics kind of remind me of Noah Rayleigh's mechanics. His mouse movements are small and accurate, and his builds and edits are insanely fast. Pixie has so far made over 230 $30,000 from competitive, and in 2023, he was the very best comp player from Sweden, which is insanely impressive considering the amount of talents from there. The one thing that makes Pixie not only one of the best mechanical players ever, but also just generally one of the best, is the fact that he rarely ever messes up. Most players have a few times where they might miss a shot or miss an edit. This seemingly doesn't happen to Pixie. When he goes down, it's most of the time just because he gets maxed, headshot sniped, or the players simply play phenomenally well. Moving on over to to chapter 4, the best mechanical player of season 1 was Cold. Now, Cold is one of the most clutch players a Fortnite competitive has ever seen. If you ask me to name the three most clutch players ever, I'd probably say Cold, Mero, and Thomas HD. It's kind of crazy how this kid used to be just a creative demon, but when he got given an opportunity by Scented back in the day, he exceeded everyone's expectations, including Scented's. Because of Cold's abilities to clutch and stay calm even during the most important moments of his career, he has become someone who comes up in debates often when talking about the best players in the world. In Season 1, Cold was also able to win an FNCS alongside Acorn, and now won yet again in Season 1 of Chapter 5 with Acorn for the two-time. His mechanics allow him to get out of extremely sticky situations, and if he keeps going like he has the last several months, in the future he will be one of the GOATs of Fortnite Competitive. Now, talking about GOATs, it's only fair we talk about Venno, who in Season 2 was the best mechanical player. Venno is undeniably a unique player. He's able to aggressively play fights better than any other player, consistently applying pressure whether it be with his guns, pickaxe, or even by facing belts. Venno also has the ability to almost perfectly read any player he fights. He instantly recognizes what kind of plays his opponents will go for, looking at how they're playing from the very first seconds of the fights he takes. And because of his fast and consistent mechs, he's always able to punish the enemy's mistakes. He's also obviously considered one of the best height players in the world, being able to take it due to his insane mechanics. For the second to last competitive 
season of chapter 4, a player by the name Poyo was the best mechanical player. Now, you've probably heard about Poyo from his 40 bomb attempt in the Solo Victory Cash Cup finals. Much like Venno, he's able to consistently apply pressure to the players he's fighting, whether it be in the second zone or the tenth zone. And as a result, he's somehow able to consistently get 30 plus alien wins in the Solo Victory Cash Cups. Poyo and Peterbot are now playing together and just got second place in the NAC FNCS Grand Finals, which really goes to show that if you're a player who master fighting, that's pretty much enough to succeed at the highest level in the world. Of course, they might have had some unknown strategy that I don't know about, but I think they're just that good at fighting and have put enough hours into the game to understand what kind of high risk, high reward plays they can and cannot go for to succeed at that level. Another player that has seen success at the highest level of recently is Cooper. Cooper was the best mechanical player of season 4, where he won the FNCS Global Championships with Mero. Now, Cooper's mechanics are some of the most visually pleasing out of any pro's playstyle. His edits are snappy and his builds are fast. Cooper's mechanical playstyle revolves around just confusing the player he's fighting by building and editing a ton. And against the majority of players in opens tournaments, this works fantastic. But when he has to adapt to playing against the very best in the world, and when the servers are at their worst, he's able to do that too. Cooper is someone I really hope to see a lot in the coming years. He has a funny and humble personality, and his skill is undeniable. And for the season we're in right now, season 1 of chapter 5, the player with the best mechs has been Marius. You might remember Marius from my The Future Pros of Competitive Fortnite video, where I talked about just how good this guy is at fighting. In the competitive community in Europe, he is by many considered the most annoying player to play against. But not because he plays passive or boring by any means, but rather just because of how hard it is to eliminate him, and how often he hits max damage shots after doing a chain of edits. Just today, Marius was able to place 4th in FNCS and getting 1st on the day. If he keeps up the same speed of improvement he has had the last year, he will actually become the best player in the world. However, for now, he might not be the best player overall, but he does secure the title for the player with the best mechanics.